Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Box with the Technical Trader at TechTrader.com. It's Tuesday, the 18th of December. These are the charts of the day, and it's not a pretty time on Wall Street, is it? But you know what? We've managed to do some nice trades, uh, trading some of those ETFs and technical instruments that uh, favor the downside, of course. But there's also some stocks moving up. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the indices just to give you a, an update as where we're at uh, from Friday. You can see that the plunge that's taken its market down on the S&P from just 2,800 to 2,500 roughly. And this just in the last week and a half, uh, 2528 was the low today. Even though it shows green, the damn thing was up 22 cents or one tenth of 1%. I wouldn't call that a rally. Is it possible we bounce right? Sure. The problem is we haven't reached the bottom of the channel. We haven't gotten to the negative readings I want to see yet. Now we might, even if we bounce around for a day or two, still come down to test that 2485 area I've been talking about for a while. You can see that there's a lot of support in this area but anything below this area, you can plunge pretty quickly and get it all the way down to 2,400 and eventually down to obvious numbers down in the 21, 2,200 range. But that might be a ways away. I would look for something in a, you know, if we get down to that area to snap back in a one, two, three, four, and then five. But for now, that's the S&P. Here's the NDX. It ain't pretty, as they say. Uh, the juxtaposition of, of support in that... 6,050 to 80 range is what my targets are pointing towards. But, uh, but you can see that it's stair stepping lower with three lower highs and three lower lows. So I do expect some lower levels, but we don't know when we're going to get it or how quickly. Uh, transportations, I'm not sure what they're going to do tomorrow because FedEx and USP are going to gap lower dramatically. This could be down to 9,000 quickly. And that would be a really oversold reading for the index at that point. But you can see we're already at support with the next target around the 9,000 and then 8,800. IWM, small caps are getting decimated as well. There's a double, triple bottom down here at around the 134 area. That might be tested tomorrow morning. If we do get a bounce, resistance is gonna be 142.44. Uh, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this, but I do wanna show you some technicals. The McClellan oscillator, well, it's oversold but not very meaning that it's out of level where we've seen some rallies in the past in that zone back in here. Question is, are we going to get a bounce from there or get much more deeply oversold, which can set up a better rally? Today's oscillator went from plus, uh, excuse me, from minus 139 to 59, closed minus 128, down 16% one day. So it's a neg negative look. It's got a falling wedge. It might snap back, but... I'd rather it go down straight down and do this kind of fall, set up a nice rally. The VIX, well, I just don't see the real big negative reading yet. We had that spike in October. It's been backing and filling, consolidating above the zone and above um, what looks like, you know, the range of support around 16. Now in the high 20s, 2558, up about 4% today. But if it gets through this zone, we might spike into the mid to high 30s, maybe even low 40s or more. So again, I, I'm not, every time we get a rally, it takes off some of the um, oversold conditions. Since I really need this thing market to just get it over with. But we're not seeing that. Every day we're getting bargain hunting rallies. That's it on the indices for now. Let's take a look at the longs and shorts. APHA and the marijuana group. The reason I'm showing you this is because after a waterfall decline and a big reversal bar, engulfing one, and then a follow through with a pullback, it's got a right-handed extended V. 100%, if you're in this stock, you've got to stop under there. That would be under 485. But at the same time, it looks like a bottoming pattern with a right-handed extended V. The initial move on this one, technically, from 375 to 659, give me almost three points. And then from here, you add on three, you get about seven to three quarters. That's up about here, maybe 760 to fill the gap. That would be my next move. And then we'll see if we can get it up to nine. But that's a long way away, and it's being presumptuous. So just want to give you the take on that. Um, and I want to look at Tilray today because it had that big one, two, three, four, five wave decline, falling wedge, and today snapping back 10 points. So is this a low? Volume picked up nicely. It was the biggest volume in two months. But is it enough? We don't know. I think basically if it gets through 86, then maybe you're going to look at 100 again. But be careful with that one. Now, what about the golds? Wow, look at AU go. It's now gone from 7 to 12 and a half. It, it's had a beautiful 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then that's wave 1 and 2. This is wave 3, so I'm looking for 
consolidation in gold to get set up a move to 13 to 13 and a half next target. But first, from a down from a lower level. The JNUG is starting to wake up. Broke out across this is out of the wedge and above the 50 today, jumping 59 cents or 7.4 percent on 11.9 million. Good but not great volume. I think you're going to get a move potentially up in that nine and a half three quarter range, 990 maybe. That could be much more tough going. KL in itself, just amazing chart. Look at this beauty. So basically, it's gone a 25 fall from when back in, pro, in the 2015 in three years. Uh, to me, I'm looking for 30 or better, 30, 32 zone up there. Nugget, which is also the sister to JNUG, looks a little better in that it's taken out its high. It's at the declining tops line. There might be some resistance here, but if we do get a follow through, your target's 21. Royal Gold was put out as a swing today. I just like this company a lot, and for a lot of reasons. And I'm looking at a massive long term pattern. It looks like a big inverted head and shoulders, doesn't it? With an upsloping neckline and, and trend line, this could be a $200 stock down the road. But I'm going to wait for a big move in gold first. However, for now, it is a swing, I believe, to about 85, 91, and maybe 98. But at some point, let's see if we get to fall through as early as tomorrow. Now, gas, UGAZ, after an incredible drop, it took it just in the last few sessions from 167 down to 100 points to 70. Today was a nice pop, a drop, popping 14 to 44 or 20%. There is some more room for upside. We may see as high as 100, 104 tomorrow. Stay tuned. Now, on the oil side, the D oil is coming down and the DWT is ramping. So is the SCO. I showed you this over the weekend, that nice little wedge. I also showed it to you last night that it broke out of the wedge. Today, an explosive move of 18% on 10 million. It looks to me like it's got a little more to go, perhaps somewhere around uh, 19 before we peak out. And the SCL sister ETF, sa same thing. Now, in the regular stock area, MTLS, wanted to show you that. The move off of this consolidation range has been spectacular. It's been in that zone for two years. Today, boom. And I mean on 1.2 million, which is huge volume for that stock, it was up 17%. Where does this go on a long-term basis? Well, only way to gauge that would be a potentially, potentially, a parallel channel to this move, which gets me somewhere up about, you can, you can see it, high 20s. Now, I'm not saying it's going 10 more points, but uh, we could see short-term getting something up in the uh, 22, 24 range. And that would be it for the longs. I'm going to show you some shorts, too. AXGN imploded today. Beautiful. Dropping all the way down to uh, about the 19 range, at which point I said, you need to cover this. It did jump two points and closed down 617 at 2136 or 22%. But at one point, it was down 30%. With big volume like that, it looks like a selling climax. Copart looks like it's right on the precipice of a rollover slam dunk. Folks, if he gets below this zone tomorrow or any time in the next few days, this could come right down to 42 or even 39. EDIT is breaking its wedge. It looks like it might be headed for the channel bottom near 22. My IN continues to fall almost every day in the last two weeks out of that bear flag. Looking for 21. MRTX broke its wedge today, or it appears to have, down $1.50, almost 4%. Minor support, well, that's about 35. We take that out, looking at 28.9. Polaris, steady decliner, rising wedge broke. It is a five-wave move down, and it is that support. It might hold in this zone, but my target remains 70. And Weight Watch has also broke its wedge, and looks like that's rolling over with a target at 37 and 32. Folks, that's basically what I wanted to show you for tonight. Let's see how it goes tomorrow. I'll talk to you then. Good night.